When doing tackle twill, it is the same type of application as the applique technique, um, but the tack down stitch or the cover stitch is an open zigzag. When we have a design, we can do automatic applique. What I have in here is I have an uppercase D, and actually what I'm going to do is copy and paste it. So I do a control C and then a control V, and I've got two of them. I'm going to show you the difference between the two. So what I will do with this one is I'll right click on it to select it. I can come down here to my stitch type and quickly change it to an applique. So I left click on applique and it quickly changes it to an applique. A couple things I want to cover in here that's going to be very important are talking about the different stitching that goes down. Uh, the first stitch is going to be the placement stitch, the second one is going to be the tack down stitch, and the third one is going to be the cover stitch, which is our satin stitch. With applic I'm sorry, with tackle twill, we typically don't use um, a tack down stitch because if you do use a tack down stitch, you will probably see that uh, underneath your open uh, zigzag tackle twill stitch. So when I right click on this, I can go to my stitch settings. I'll go to applique, and I'm just going to deselect the tack down stitch. When I do that, you'll see the step two right here will go away. So I'll hit apply, and when I hit apply, you see that we no longer have three steps, we only have two steps. The cover stitch, I still want the cover stitch. The offset of two millimeters means that the line will fall inside here two millimeters, and then with a width of four millimeters, it will go halfway on that two millimeter offset, two millimeters, and then halfway on the other side. So it's all falling mostly inside that blue and white flashing line, right inside that twill. This is important because um, with tackle twill, you want the twill just to hit on the, or I'm sorry, you want the tackle twill stitch to just hit on the outside of that twill. Imagine the blue and white flashing lines being our twill. So you want that, uh, that twill material just to hit the outline. In order to change it to a twill, tackle twill style stitch, we go up to satin on our main menu bar. We're going to deselect the auto stitch shortening. We have, sorry about that, we have the option to use the zigzag stitch style. And then we are going to change the density and open it up. So I'm going up in number. I'm going to go to 2.0 millimeters. That means that our uh, stitching is going to be two millimeters apart, uh, spaced apart. So I'll go ahead and hit apply. And when I hit apply, you can see that that stitch is really opening up. But the problem I have here um, with the automatic applique uh, in this instance is because I have an inside and an outside, but I have this travel stitch going around. So sometimes if it's easier to have control of those in and out points so you don't have a travel stitch, we do the uh, applique more manually, or the tackle tool more manually. So I'm going to come over here on this guy and I'm going to right click on it. I will right click again to say create outline from area edges. The first stitch I need to make is a run stitch on all the borders with the offset of zero as this will be my placement stitch. I'll go ahead and press OK. It creates a placement um, outline. I will change the color because with the applique um, it is you need to make each step a different color so you can stop the machine. So I'll go ahead and press OK. There is my placement stitch. I will again take the, uh, the D itself. You can see it's shaded in gray on my stitch sequence bar. I'll right click inside of it, create an outline from area edges. This time I'm going to do the cover stitch. So I'm going to do a negative two offset because I do want that width to be four millimeters. It will be a satin border, so I'll press OK again. We will change the color, and I'll just change it to red, or actually let's do purple, and press OK. And now it does that cover stitch. I no longer need the inside, so I'm just going to select it and do a control delete. So you have this uh, more separated because it is 
it was done more manually. So let's say with the inside, we're going to go to the stitch settings. I right click on it, hit my space bar. I'll go to the satin tab at the top, change my settings to deselect the auto stitch shortening, the zigzag stitch style, and now we will open that density up to two millimeters. I'll go ahead and press OK. And um, actually, I forgot one thing. We have our underlay still activated. So we will go back to our stitch settings, deselect use underlay, and then press OK. Now, you can see that in the purple, we have a travel stitch. So we can go in and change our in and out points just slightly to get rid of that travel stitch. So you can see we move the in and out points um, so that it flows in one direction. We will do the same on the outside of the D. With the outside of the D, I will hit my spacebar. I will deselect Use Underlay. I will go up to the Line tab. Um, actually, I'm sorry, we don't need to go to the Line. We need to go to the Satin tab. Deselect Auto Stitch Shortening. Use the Zigzag Stitch Style. I'm going to select that and oh, that's the wrong area. I'll type in 2 on my density and press OK. Now when I do that, it will open up that stitch. I can, again, move my in and out points, but let's say you're having, you're not having luck with those in and out points um, getting rid of that travel stitch. So if um, many times what I will do if I'm, I'm not having luck, I will take this line and convert it to an area. You can see there's a travel stitch right there. So I can just kind of keep moving it and see what I get, which right there works really well. But let's say we're not having any luck. So I'm going to go in here, right click on that line. I will go up to view and then view outline. In my view outline, you can see there's that line. Um, up on outline, I am going to left click on that, scroll down, and choose create area from line. I want that area width to be four millimeters because I want that satin or zigzag stitch to be four millimeters and press OK. Once I do that, it creates an area and now I can use a satin stitch on that area and have a little bit more control over it. So with that selected, I will go to my space bar. I'm going to change the color because now we have a line and then an area on top of it and I'll show you that in a second. But we'll deselect use underlay, go to the satin tab, deselect auto stitch shortening, use zigzag stitch style, up that density and hit apply. I'll go ahead and press OK. So you can see you've got the uh, the pink and the purple. So I'm going to take the purple and I'm just going to hide it for now. With this um, using an area, we now can do things such as divide the area up, we can change stitch angles, um, we can separate the D into segments if we'd like. I am going to go to the view outline, I'm going to go to outline and then divide with line and I'm going to divide with a line right here. Left click, outside the area, go all the way across, left click again and press enter. Press escape to get out of the tool I'll regenerate my stitches. The reason I did that is so I can put my end point at the beginning and the out point at the end on either side of that line. When I hit go, you can see now I don't have a travel stitch. I can also go in here and play more with my stitch angles. I can alter any one of the, uh, you know, the, the outline if I go to the outline view and edit outline mode and maybe let's say let's straighten this out a little bit I want a little bit more on the outside here I can do several changes to it so I'll just go ahead and hit go and you can see those changes are made I can also go into the angle view and you can see within here within these areas I do have angles I'm just going to turn off the area and now turn on the line um, and left click on the 
uh, frame that represents that line and you can see I am in the angle view but I don't have the, con the same kind of control over my angles as I would with an area. So you can use either or um, but knowing how to change it to an area is, uh, is good for some letters. So whichever one you decide to go with, and I'm just here on this example, I'm going to decide to go with the purple, I need to take the pink one and control delete it. With that control deleted, I go back to my stitch view and I can see here my placement stitch is going to be orange and my cover stitch is going to be purple. So when I bring it over to the machine in that applique mode, for these areas I would put in the same needle. So I would put in, let's say we are stitching on a specific color that's on needle 3. For my design I would input 3 for this one and then 3 for this one. So that way the machine stops whenever it sees that repeating color. Uh, if you have any questions please feel free to email me or give us a call at SWF Central. Phone number is 636-724-6400. Email address is Andrea, that's A-N-D-R-E-A, at swfcentral.com. Thanks.